Hey everybody, I've got a question. Where does the New Testament tell us to worship on the first day of the week? Today, almost all Christian denominations worship on Sunday. There are a few that don't, but where do we see that in the New Testament? In the New Testament, we find eight verses that reference the first day of the week. Consequently, five of these are all talking about the same event, and the sixth one is talking about the same day. So all of these verses here are talking about when Jesus was resurrected from the dead, the women went to the tomb early in the morning, and Jesus was gone. So these verses might seem not to have anything to do with Sunday worship because there was no worship going on, but really it does in a roundabout way because why were these women coming to the grave on the first day of the week to anoint their Lord? Well, Luke tells us in Luke 23, 56, which is right before one of our verses, Luke 24, verse 1. So this is why they came on the first day of the week. Right before that, when Jesus had died, they went to the tomb where he was, they saw the place, and then it says, they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils, and they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. So even though this doesn't tell us to worship on the first day of the week, it does show us that these women came on the first day of the week because they didn't come on the Sabbath. Why didn't they just stay? Why didn't they just pull an all-nighter and make sure that the Lord's body was anointed? Why didn't they come early on the on the seventh day of the week, the next day after the crucifixion, and anoint him? Is because they were resting according to the commandment. So we also have that same day, something else that happened in the day of Jesus' resurrection. In the evening, we read this. The same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. So here you see an assembly of the disciples on the first day of the week. Was this for worship? No, it wasn't. It was for fear of the Jews. So here we see that this verse isn't telling us to worship. So we have two left. Let's see if we can pull something out of that. Christ has ascended into heaven or way into Acts chapter 20 now. Paul has become an apostle. And what do we read about the first day of the week? We read now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together, and in a window sat a certain young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep, and as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. So let's look at a couple things about what was happening here. So this was the first day of the week. They'd come together to break bread. Paul is preaching. It sounds like a worship service. I'm going to guess in a way it was a worship service, but here's a couple things to make sure that we understand about what was happening there. First of all, Paul reasoned in the synagogues on the Sabbath. Every Sabbath, this was his custom. This was what he did, not the first day of the week. So why was he, why was he together preaching and breaking bread on the first day of the week? Well, one thing is they were breaking bread together every day of the week. Acts chapter 2 tells us already, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, took their meat with gladness and simplicity of heart. So they broke bread on Sunday, they broke bread on Monday, they broke bread on Tuesday. Breaking bread together does not mean that there was a command. We don't read a command here. We just see that they were there on the first day of the week, breaking bread, and Paul is preaching. But there's something else we can grab from this verse as well. Remember that the reckoning of days for the Jews is from sundown to sundown, from evening to evening. So think about this with me. It's the first day of the week, and it's dark. When is the dark time? of the first day of the week. 
it's at the beginning of the day. In other words, at the end of the previous day when it gets dark. So on Friday, when the disciples buried Jesus, it became dark and the Sabbath started that evening, that night. So likewise, Paul was with his friends on the Sabbath in the daytime and time passed by he was planning a trip the next day so he stayed with them all night long preaching into the first day of the week at night during what we would call Saturday night it couldn't have been Sunday night because that would have been Monday so the the opposites really happening here than what somebody might think he's not worshiping particularly on the first day of the week because it's a holy day he's continuing to worship because it's an afterglow from the Sabbath all right our eighth verse let's see what it says first Corinthians 16 2 on the first day of the week let each one of you lay something aside storing up as you may prosper that there be no collections when I come so at this time there was a famine in Jerusalem and Paul was asking churches including the church in Colossae to take up an offering a collection during the weeks before he arrived so that when he arrived he wouldn't have to take up a collection and he asked them to take it up on the first day of the week do you remember Jesus parable about the vineyard owner who went into the town he saw some people standing around and he said come work in my vineyard today and I'll pay you a fair wage when did he pay them next week the next month no he paid them at the end of the day no wonder in the Lord's Prayer give us this day our daily bread so these people why were they laying up according to how they had prospered that day because they were working and they were doing what uh, Paul asked them to do when they had prospered they set aside the first fruits of their labors just like Proverbs 3 9 and 10 says honor the Lord with your possessions and with your first fruits of all your increase so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats with o will overflow with new wine so here Paul is calling for these people hey when you work on the first day of the week take the first amount of money and set some of that aside so I don't have to take up a collection when I come this isn't a command to worship Instead, it's a picture of people working servile work and then taking some of that money and setting it aside on the first day of the week to give an offering for people in need in Jerusalem. So what about some of those verses that tell us things like, don't let anybody judge you about the Sabbath. Everybody's got to be convinced in their own minds. Let's see what the Bible says. Colossians 2.16 tells us, let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbaths which are a shadow of things to come but the substance is of Christ don't let anybody judge you because of the Sabbath and listen friends I'm not judging anybody I know some beautiful people in the world that honor Sunday as a Sabbath I know some people who go to church on Sunday but don't really honor it as a day of rest. They'll go uh, you know, out afterwards and, and eat and have other people work for them or, or go watch football and just like any old regular day. I don't judge them either. We don't want to judge each other. But when we see something in the Bible, we want to do what it says. And I know that genuine Christians, when they see something that God reveals to them in the Word and He says to them, this is what I want you to do. This is who I want you to be. This is what I don't want you to do. This is how I want you to live. People that love God. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So I don't have to judge anybody. It's not my job. It's not your job either. And don't let anybody judge you on these things. But when we see what God has for us and he calls us to something, we want to obey him and do it because we love him. Likewise, Romans 14, 5 tells us, one person esteems one day above another, another esteems every day alike. Let each one be fully convinced in his own mind. Friends, you've got to be convinced on these things. You've got to know for yourself. Don't look at somebody on YouTube and say, oh, I like how this guy says it. I like what this guy brought up. I'm just going to follow him. Or don't say, well, I see what it says in the Bible, but my pastor says this. Or I see the scriptures and they line up, but uh, my church, church teaches that. Friends, we got to be convinced in our minds. 
and know what the Bible says and follow it because we love God. Check out these other videos about the law of God, about legalism, about the Sabbath to get a full picture of what is being shared here on my channel. If you like what I'm sharing, subscribe so you can join me in this journey as we go through it together. Thank you.